Hello everyone, thanks for attending our talk. I am Myung Jae Chang, a PhD student from KAIST South Korea. This work is done in collaboration with Akil Masar, Anton Ispusu, Juna Song, and Fine Kassar when I was on an internship at Nokia Bellas, Cambridge. Inertial measurement units are everywhere. Being one of the cheapest, smallest, and most power efficient sensors, most wearable devices, including smartphones, smartwatch, earbuds, smart rings, and smart crosses, have IMU inside. While these sensors simply measure the physical acceleration of each one, state-of-the-art human activity recognition models are capable of extracting useful user contacts from it. To name a few, HAR models can track users' physical activity, transportation modes, respiration rate, hand gestures, and eating episodes. However, there is one big challenge IMU-based HAR models should face, the wearing diversity. First, there exists a big diversity in sensor placement. We wear wearable devices in diverse forms. We sometimes held it in hand, sometimes put it in the trouser pocket or a backpack. Also, the change in sensor placement is very frequent. On the way to work, the smartphone comes out from the pocket and then moves to your hand, then to the ear, then goes into a handbag. The consequence of the wearing diversity is catastrophic. Even a simple physical activity recognition model trained on a trouser pocket fails drastically even up to 90% when tested on other body positions. Of course, there existed research to make HAR models perform on multiple body positions, but they all required a labeled data set collection on multiple body positions. Considering that the labeled data collection is often the most costly job in developing the HAR model, it greatly damages the practicality of those solutions. If so, what if there exists a solution to wearing diversity that does not need additional labeled data set collection? To this end, unsupervised domain auditation, aka UDA, has emerged as a promising technique to address deep learning models across domains using only an unlabeled dataset from the target domain. UDA techniques demonstrate two benefits. First, it provides HAR model developers a way to incorporate unlabeled dataset during model training. By simply providing an unlabeled dataset collected from multiple body positions, UDA can increase robustness to wearing diversity, reducing the drastic accuracy drop. Second, apply UDA does not change the model architecture. Later, UDA focuses on changing the training procedure. Recently, Canada has applied UDA to adapt the smartphone's HAR model to the smartwatch. However, the problem is that UDA is not a silver bullet that can be applied blindly. UDA algorithms sometimes end up having no gain or even reducing the model's performance. For example, when we try to adapt a HAR model trained on a hand to a knee, the performance of the model was degraded on both source and target body positions. Hence, we need a systematic study on how we can apply UDA techniques to the wearing diversity problem. Specifically, we use the following four ranges. The first range is the choice of UDA algorithms. We categorize the UDA algorithms and uncover the assumptions and downside of each algorithm. The second is the choice of body positions. We compare UDA algorithms' performance under diverse source and target body positions. The third is the effect of dataset properties. We control the dataset size and class distribution to examine its effect on UDA's performance. Finally, the evaluation metrics. We sought for the most appropriate metric to compare the performance of UDA algorithms. Adaptability refers to the performance on target body positions supplied as an unlabeled dataset. This metric would be our main target when we adapt an existing HAR model to a new body position. For instance, when the model trained on a released, subsequently needs to be deployed to the chest. On the other hand, persistence measures the performance on the source body position supplied as a labeled dataset. Persistence is particularly important as we want to retain the model's performance in the source body position along with becoming better at the target body position. Generalizability measures how well a model performs on body positions for which it was neither trained nor adapted. This property is critical because in real world scenarios, wearing positions do not remain static and users can wear their devices in unexpected positions. In this paper, we define generalizability as the aggregate performance on all body positions available in a dataset. Three UDA techniques are compared in the evaluation. Firstly, data augmentation modes perturbations that commonly exist in an accelerometer signal on a given dataset. Feature matching and confusion maximization are designed to align the feature representations from source and target body positions. While feature matching achieves it by minimizing a popular distance measure maximum mean discrepancy, confusion maximization uses domain adversarial training, which is the state-of-the-art technique on machine learning literature. For more details, please refer to our paper. The key results are as follows. First, the comparison of UDA techniques shows some counterintuitive results. 
Feature matching, which is a fairly simple technique, provided the best auditation performance among the three UDA techniques. Confusion maximization, which is the state of the art in the UDA literature, surprisingly provided the worst auditation performance. Data augmentation showed reasonable auditation performance but suffered from poor persistence scores. In addition, we uncovered the best body positions for all labels dataset collection, as well as found several pitfalls of UDA, namely dataset size and class distribution mismatch. In conclusion, the paper presents a systematic study of UDA in the context of human activity recognition. Our findings call for more research on the supervised domain auditation for HAR. The result shows that the state-of-the-art auditation technique from the Vision Academia does not result in the best auditation performance in HAR. We also provided practical guidelines to HAR model developers having UDA in mind. The guideline includes choosing the best body position for UDA and the selection of appropriate UDA techniques. Please see our paper for more details. Thank you for listening.